know. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Brew City Builds. Woo! If you're a newbie to my channel, my name's Marcel. My boo Ben and I bought a house about a year and a half ago and I've practically been renovating since the first day we moved in. So far the main level is finished as well as the upstairs. I have a whole playlist of each room makeover. If you haven't seen those and you want to check them out, I'll put a link right here. But there's still one more little spot I have to do before I can start working on the basement and that's the stairwell. I want to go a little wild in here and do like a pop of color since the rest of the house is a little neutral so I asked one of my best friends Trish Anderson who definitely knows color to help me out with this. She makes some amazing runners and rugs and legit artwork and some incredible art installations so I would love nothing more than to have something of hers in our house. She's not only talented, but she's also one of the sweetest and coolest and realest people I know and I just love her. We actually used to be roommates back in Brooklyn in like 2009 or something, but now she lives in Savannah and I live here. So I want to get a little Zoom sesh started so that way you can meet her and then I can ask her all the questions I need to know to get the stairs prepped for her runner. So enough of me talking, let's go give her a call. Hey boo! Hi! <laughs> So what do I need to do to have my stairs ready for the install of the runner? Well, the main thing is it needs to be completely cleared off, you know, and I will say that I know you are like master DIY and that's why like, I'm like, I think I have the confidence that you will be able to install it, but I do, it's, it is a product that I would recommend having a carpet installer for most people to do just because there's. You really, you need a lot of you know, air compressor with a good stapler and all this kind of stuff. And so I, I really do advise that because um, you have to cut it and all this kind of stuff. So, but you want your stairs completely cleared of like any sort of other nails or old residue or anything like that. I'd pre-paint and make sure that that gets really dry, you know, give it a good dry time in order to make sure that the, the rug doesn't stick to it. Like for example, on my stairs, I didn't let the back of it dry. <laughs> Like I didn't like the, the latex on the back of the one. I, I mean, the ones, the ones that are, I have now are actually, I don't make the one, you know, they're manufactured yeah. for me in right. India and they're way better quality than the ones that I actually make. But I did try to take mine up once and it's stuck to the floor. So <laughs> <laughs> it'll stay there whenever we leave. <laughs> I, I mean, that's a pretty good installation to leave behind though, really. So, I mean, I saw on your website there they come in different sizes i'm going with the 24 inch by eight foot so how many would you suggest that i that i get so that way i can line up the pattern basically you need to get so that there's the um they call that your stairs the rise which is like the the part that goes vertical and the run which is actually your step so essentially you're trying to figure out like how many linear feet is in like the length of your stairway. And then you want to add extra because when you're using the stock rugs, which is like a way more affordable option, you want to be able to, when you install these eight foot runners, you want to make sure that you can cut it at a certain point on the stair or that the seam lines up at a certain point of the stair. So it's not like in the middle of your run or on the edge of your run or, yeah. you know, so oftentimes you're having to like buy a lot extra, but you also like, if you can imagine, like when you go over a curb, even if it's just like a little bull nose, it adds length you know yes. so you're just wanting to make sure you have a lot extra and so that just allows for like optimal seam placement yeah um, a little and, wiggle room yeah some wiggle room and then and also like the eight foot runners repeat end to end meaning like the top of one runner meets the bottom of one runner so you know you have some play there where you can kind of cut into the design to line it up more and it's a very busy pattern so you're never also with a stair, like when you see it, you're just going to see the flow. So like, yeah. if you end up cutting it, you know, 
at a certain point to like match it up. It's really not going to make that big of a difference than that, you know, the way that the pattern lines up. I typically will start at the top um, and then you start, you know, start your runner and then it's like you, you're stapling across the top, putting some staples in the at the sides and then you take it down and like push it in really tight and do you know so you kind of just put staples in wherever it feels good now a professional carpet installer is going to do a much better job than that <laughs> <laughs> but um i mean i just staple it you know and like yeah. the pile height in it is um you could also like put like a double-sided um a double-sided carpet tape at the bottom um, under it. I mean, I just have never really had issues with it just being stapled. And then that way, if you ever want to take it out, you can just rip it out, you know? And the pile height, you know, is at a point where you can really bury the staples in there. So you kind of like move the the yarn apart and you sort of jam it. Yeah. I was curious about that because I'm like, should I get like, I was looking at different staple lengths. Do you think I should get like three quarter just to make sure I get enough between the carpet and the, the wood? Yeah, I would. And they're, okay. cause they're, they're backed with like a rigid um, layer of like a substrate in between that. And then ultimately the backing, like I have, um, this isn't the style you got, this is the slat, but yeah. like you can see the back has this really nice cotton on it. You yeah, nice. That. Mm-hmm. Um, they're pretty thick if you just see the bottom. Oh yeah, the pile's <laughs> nice. I love that. I know they're really good. Yeah. Well, it took me many, many months to get it to where I wanted it, and tried several suppliers and all that kind of stuff. But you can kind of like split it open, oh, you know, cool, yeah. and sort of bury your staple in there. I do recommend using a pneumatic staple mm-hmm. gun. So if you have an air compressor, the Okay, yeah. So the staple guns, you can get them for like 35 bucks. At okay, cool. Yeah, I was looking at the guns because I have like smaller ones for smaller staples, but I need to get a carpet kind of pneumatic gun. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, there. I can send you a link of the ones that I liked. I use it on like all installations and stuff like Great. that. It's, I think it's literally like 35, 40 bucks. It's Perfect. red. I yeah, I love that. Um, I'm so excited. I can't wait. I, do. I can't wait to see it. What are you painting it black underneath or white? I'm painting it white. I'm going with the whole vibe of the house and I'm pretty much essentially copying you because I love it in your house. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and it just goes with the yes. flow in our house. It's like white. I'm very proud of you for embracing color. I know. I'm really, well, I'm really excited that we're going to, like, when people come in the house, they're going to walk around the corner because our house is pretty neutral, as you know, behind me, you can see. Yeah. Uh But I think it's going to be this really nice surprise when people walk into the hallway and they see, like, this pop of color with the black ceiling in the hallway. I think it's going to look really cool. And I think that the black and white stripe in it will really like yeah. pull in a lot of the stories that you already have going on in your house. Exactly. You know? It's like all a flow, you know? Well, Boo, I just want to say that I am so excited to have a piece of you in our home. I like literally have been gagging on that runner ever since I saw it. And so thank you for, you know, being a part of this video and I'm glad that a little bit of me can be there and it's like we're hanging out when we're not. You know? I know, all the time. You'll just be in my house. Yeah, love you. I love you so much. And um, I'll email you if I have any questions in the interview. Okay, and if we need to revisit anything, just let me know. Cool. Okay, Thank talk you for doing to you. This, yeah. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. What a little sweetie. We definitely talked for like a half an hour, so I'm going to have to edit this down a lot. But if you want to see the full conversation where we go in depth about her process and other things like that, definitely let me know in the comments and I can upload it in a separate video. But for now, I know what I need to know, so let's get started. You don't know how long I have been waiting to be able to rip out this carpet. It was pretty gross when we moved in, but ever since I did the renos upstairs, it's now super gnarly. There's always been this tear, so I've been able to see that there's some pretty nice wood under there. And today's the day I get to uncover it and see it in all its glory. I'm sure there's a bunch of staples and carpet strips under here, so once I get all the carpet and padding out, I'm going to get to work on getting all that out.
thought I was done with that old tile, but I found some more on the landing up here. It's all good though, I'm just gonna cover it with the leftover tiles that I have from doing the upstairs and then it'll all match. That's coming later, so for now, it's time to mud. When I took off the wood, that was like right here and right here, it kind of took off some of the plaster, so I have to fix that. I also took off the little trim pieces that were around the door frame because they kind of like jutted out into the stairwell and I always feel like I'm gonna hit my head when I'm going down the stairs, so now there's cracks and I gotta mud those as well. Now that the mud's dry, it's time to smooth her out. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I am not a big fan of dust. That's tea, actually. My mom taught me a little trick of wet sanding while I was doing the bathroom reno, and it worked out great. All you need is a bucket with some fresh water and a clean sponge, and it works just as good as sandpaper without the mess. You just need to make sure that you wring out the sponge like really well so that there's barely any moisture in there. Just enough to soften the mud so that it gets it nice and smooth. Before I start making a mess of the stairs, I gotta measure them with some strings so that way I can get those numbers off to Trish so the runners can get ordered. The string has to be attached how the runner is going to be installed to get those numbers right. So I'm using some string I found around the house and some painter's tape. There's also a couple creaky stairs so I put in some new screws to see if that helps a little bit. That created some new holes so once the measurements are done I'm going to go in with some wood filler just to make sure the wood surface is nice and level. I feel like the boy in the plastic bubble right now. So I'm about to start sanding the stairs. I put up all this plastic to try and contain all the dust that I'm about to make. It's like a cozy little cave in here. I'm using my power sander with 120 grit sanding discs. I'm also using 120 grit sandpaper sheets just to kind of get in the little nooks and crannies that the power sander can't get to. I want to level out the wood putty that I just put down as well as take off that shiny top coat so that way the new paint will stick. This is definitely my least favorite part of doing any kind of reno because I'm a clean freak, but you gotta do it. So... Total idiot. I asked Trish a million questions, but the one thing I spaced on was turnaround for shipping. She just told me it was going to be 16 to 18 weeks, so I'm going to be waiting longer than I thought. I originally planned to have this all done in one go, but it looks like it's going to be a two-parter. Sorry. I am going to continue on with this reno, so that way when the runner does arrive, the stairs will be ready to go. So yeah, for now, it's time to paint. I just went and picked up the goods. I'm using Ultra Pure Wipe by Bear in a matte finish for the walls. For the trim, I'm using Super Wipe by Bear in a satin finish like the rest of it upstairs. And that's it, I'm gonna head home and get to it. The day has finally come, it's time to start painting the stairs. I already vacuumed them like three times and then gave them a really good wipe down just to make sure there wasn't any more dust. And before all that, I cocked all the seams and I gotta say, they feel legit solid. So the first thing I'm gonna do is prime. I got this special paint for flooring. It's called Porch and Patio Floor Paint by Bear in Super White with a gloss finish. I'm gonna be cutting in all the hard to reach corners with a brush and then go in with a foam cabinet roller to get a nice smooth finish.
I finally made it to the last thing to paint. I sanded the handrail while I was sanding the stairs, so it's ready to go. I'm going to be matching the black ceiling in the hallway for this, so I'm using Noir by Valspar in a semi-gloss finish. I also got some new brackets for the railing because the old ones were a little bit too long and it made the railing stick out into the doorway, so I want to fix that. Alright, we're finally getting somewhere. The stairs are painted, the railing is up, so now I just have to work on that little spot of tile that's up on the landing. I already did a dry fit of the tile, so I know what I need to cut. I use this guillotine-esque tile cutter and it's super amazing and makes like really clean cuts, so I highly suggest it if you're going to be doing any kind of tile work with vinyl tiles. I'll have it linked in the description box below as well as the tile and the floor adhesive since it's the same stuff that I used on the upstairs. And then once all that is done, I'm going to install some stair edging, which are just those little metal strips that go on the edge to protect the tile from getting any chips or cracks from when you walk on them. So the runners didn't magically appear like I was secretly hoping they would, but I did hang this really amazing portrait of Dolly Parton and her hairdo that I love, so at least that's something. I think the stairs are as done as they're going to get until those runners arrive, but they already look like a million times better, so let's take a look. Thanks for watching! We're more than halfway at this point, so once those runners arrive, I can finish off these stairs. Let me know what you think of the transformation so far, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you want to give me in this video some love, I would totally love if you hit that little like button. So anyway, there's more in the works, so subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon. Bye!